In this video, we'll take apart the Fujifilm X-E2. Time ago, I already made a uh, video on showing how to e replace the image sensor. But since then, I happened to service this camera a couple of times, so I decided to make a full uh, teardown. So if you have problems with your camera, with your X-E2 Fujifilm, Probably this video will help you to understand a bit better what's inside this camera and how to fix it. Very important point, um, every time you start uh, making a repair you, or you open up uh, a, your camera, remember to take the battery off from uh, the camera. Otherwise, you may risk to create um, other damages rather than, uh, than repair it. Okay, so this is a very slow process. I'm gonna leave some parts on this video. I will leave the full length of the, of the uh, whatever I'm doing, just to understand the, uh, the precision that this, the attention that this camera requires in order to do certain things. For example, here, if I pull the, uh, this uh, leather, it's like fake leather cover, if I pull it too much, I, I, and I may end up to break it or either um, damage the stickness on the adhesive. So the reason I'm leaving this in full length is just for you to understand how much time requires, how much attention requires to not damage up and be able to pull off this cover or other parts without creating any, any damage. This first step it's, uh, is by take, pulling off the covers in order to reach the screws and radar by taking off the back cover of the camera. As you can see, this is a very slow uh, process. Usually on, on other Petna Prism uh, cameras, it, it is, it's a bit, it's actually, it's much easier than, than uh, on these ones. But this is the way the uh, Fujifilm uh, make their, their cameras. And, uh, you know, the reason of this video is just to show you and make you understand the, how, how much attention it requires. Even if it's a, a very small camera, how much attention requires in order to, to reach certain, certain points. So I almost uncover the right hand side. I'm gonna need to do the other side as well. If you wonder why I'm not taking off completely the cover, um, this is because of the the uh, the power of the the thickness of the adhesive. So uh, there's uh, there's a uh, high potential to damage this this cover if you want to take it pull it off completely and also there's no reason to pull it off completely once you reach your screws it's very straightforward but as, as you can see it's very very hard if you want to make it a bit easier i'd recommend to uh, use a heat gun even here, I'm, I'm using the heat gun uh, or maybe a hairdryer. So on the left hand side, upper side, there's only one screw that uh, we need to take off. Now we have two screws on the right hand side.
Okay, so next we have a few other screws on the top of the back. By the way, um, be careful not be careful not to take the wrong screws to undo the wrong screws. There's no need to take the wrong the other screws for now. This third screw is slightly longer than the other ones, so keep in mind when you put your screws aside. It might happen that the screws is uh, some screws are not coming off easily once they are un unscrewed. But here the tweezers you make it it makes a uh, a very a good work. We have these other two screws on actually four screws on the bottom. These screws are all the same. Okay, so now that we took all the screws, next step before we take the cover off, we must be very careful because there's the flat cable that the um, the LCD screen flap cable and buttons that basically holds the cover in place and uh, doesn't allow us to um, to release it completely. In my opinion, they uh, they design this uh, this design is is bad is wrong unless they made it in purpose. Okay, so there are two ways to uh, disconnect this back cover. One is by using the manufacturer manufacturer design is by uh, separating the LCD screen from the from the back cover and then releasing. You, then you're gonna have only one flat cable, the, the small flat cable that you need to release, and you're gonna have your your cover uh, off. And the other way is by Disconnecting, which is what I'm trying to show you uh, here, is by disconnecting the also the LCD uh, flat cable without separating the LCD screen from the back. Because if I do so, I'm going to need to put new uh, double tape, a new double tape on the LCD screen when I'm going to re reassemble everything. And also, there is not a normal uh, double tape adhesive adhesive it's a, a sponge double tape adhesive and if you don't have it you might um, you might end up not uh, putting the LCD uh, um, not sealing the LCD around the, the cover and you might end up sending lots of uh, dust and dirt and debris inside your your camera Okay, so um, I managed to pull off the that uh, foam that holds the the connector in place, and now, as you can see, I was able to release the the LCD screen, the flat cable. This is the connector. Uh, this uh, is uh, basically the uh, flip actuator, so-called actuator. So I, I've uh, been able to unlock the actuator and release the uh, the back and the LCD screen. Next, we're gonna take apart the components on the back cover. But if you want to skip this step, you can uh, choose from the time timestamps uh, line, and you can um, go to the next step. 
So as you can see, I've managed to um, pull off the buttons, the plastic caps. Next step is by taking off the LCD screen. Just to, this is just to show you in case you need, you need to replace the LCD screen. As I mentioned, uh, once you um, disconnect the LCD screen from the back, you need to replace the, uh, the double tape and um, this is not a normal uh, double tape it's a, a foam double tape a foamy double tape it's like uh, uh, half half millimeter uh, foam and on the sides is the uh, the tape this one this one here, here. There's no way to to save this uh, this uh, this tape, this double tape. Once you disconnected the LCD screen, this will uh, will damage. Another thing that I have noticed is that the manufacturer choose to put this tape on on this the top and the bottom side. And not all around the um, the edge of the of the LCD. So there's there's no complete sealing around 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 the LCD. Uh, there's still room to get some dust or water inside the camera. Next step is by disconnecting disconnecting this uh, little flat cable. Uh, you must be careful uh, when you manage this this flat cable; otherwise, you may risk to to damage it. Um, at this point, especially uh, the way it bends, uh, and if that happens, you're not gonna have. Uh, there will not be communication between the uh, buttons board and the um, motherboard, and it might give you the impression that there's a there's a button issue instead of the uh, flat cable. Here is a, just a, a tape that I believe uh, is um, the manufacturer decided decide to put it just for protection, water water sealed. In some way. Next, we're gonna take the buttons uh, board off. Uh, if happens that you never open the camera and you uh, have you start having issues with the buttons, the buttons are stop working or. Uh, they uh, sometimes they 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 fail. Definitely, the problem is with the uh, with the buttons. This mod, uh, this button board. But instead, if happens that you uh, open up the camera and you put everything back and you start to have you start having issues with the buttons, especially with uh, these uh, parts. This right hand side on the back of the camera, I will rather check the state of the flat cable as I already mentioned. Uh, I will check the uh, state of the flat cable and not the uh, the bottom board, especially if the bottom board uh, worked uh, previously. So this is the bottom board and the camera speaker. In case you need to replace the, uh, I believe this is the main uh, common bottom board. Now you know how to do it. I'm gonna take off this other the button caps, just to show you, just to finish the uh, disassembly on the uh, back cover. Doesn't happen that often to um, see the buttons uh, caps washed it out but uh, at least now you know how to replace it
Okay, so next step, before reaching the uh, main board, I need to take off some other parts, and one is this um, front hand grip, shall I call it? Uh, if you want to be able to pull off the uh, the rubber without damaging damaging the the double to the adhesive, I recommend to use a hair dryer or um, a, a heat gun. And also, you must be uh, very patient when you're about to pull off this uh, this rubber. Apparently, is very very uh, stick to the to the plastic uh, as much as the rest of the other covers on on this uh, on the Fuji films. I realized. Okay, so this is the rubber of the front uh, hand grip. Next, we're gonna need to um, take off. This uh, the screws in order to uh, release the plastic cover. So the screws on the front are uh, slightly shorter than the ones on the back. So we have four screws in total that holds this plastic. And in order to reach the motherboard, you, we need to follow these steps. And also by doing doing so, uh, I'm uh, reaching the um, the motherboard uh, cov cover, metal cover. Okay, so we've managed to uh, take the uh, screws on the right hand side. Now we need to uh, take these uh, screws. And also, by taking these two screws, we're gonna release the left uh, left command buttons. It's this little little board. There's a, a quite strong double tape underneath this uh, this board, so you must be very very careful. Also, I do recommend to use a heat gun or a, a hair dryer. To facilitate the uh, the extraction, and also there's um, there's another uh, flat cable. Yeah, you must be. Uh, very careful to not damage the uh, flat cable. Uh, this is the button, left hand side buttons, the board that um, you can access uh, different uh, options on your camera. Something that caught my attention uh, around this cover, the amount of screws that uh, we need to, to unscrew in order to release this, uh, this cover. Uh, there are another two screws on the right hand side as you already seen. And also there's one on the bottom here. Another two um, still on the bottom. These two screws are, um, are both the same. A good thing to pr practice is when we need to um, disassemble uh, camera, we don't necessarily need to take all the screws uh, uh, out. For example, on the bottom, uh, since there are lots of screws, uh, at least I do prefer not to doing so. I do prefer to take screws in uh, in certain steps. So um, 
and now we uh, we took the screws on the bottom just because we had to release this um, this plate. Apparently, there's another screw hidden um, in this uh, this position, this place. As you can see again, I am uh, I'm using all my patience to uh, be able not to damage the the cover and the 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 double tape the adhesive on the on the cover. So now uh, we have the uh, cover almost, almost released. There's another screw hidden in this part, the left hand side, front left hand side. As you already noticed, um, Fuji likes to hide their, their screws. And we have one screw left. Uh, which is uh, which is hidden uh, under this um, this tape. Finally, the metal cover, uh, we managed to pull it off. Next, we're gonna start disconnecting uh, all connections and wires on uh, this, um, this model. There are some wires that are uh, they're connecting with the top of the top cover, top of the camera. So we're gonna need, in order to um, release the motherboard, uh, we we will need to um, desolder the the wires. As always, um, I do prefer to disconnect everything from the motherboard before uh, uh, taking the motherboard out. Uh, the step we the steps we're gonna do now will uh, disconnect the uh, all connections and we're gonna take off the top cover and after we're gonna take off the motherboard but in case you need to take off the motherboard only you 
you can you can either um, disconnect the wires all the flat cables the wires and take the motherboard out in case you need to fix it repair it uh, or replace it but still I do recommend to um, disconnect the screws that release the top cover even if you don't need to take the top cover completely off um, uh, in order to have more space to work and be able to uh, take the motherboard out easier I do recommend to uh, release, disconnect and um, release the top cover the reason why I'm wobbling this, uh, the flat cables some flat cables is because are coming off easier and they don't create any any kind of damage sometimes the pins of the connectors are so strong that if the flat cable is um, connected or disconnected several times it will start damaging the flat cable so the wobbling uh, uh, movement it helps to uh, to make it increase the lifespan of the of the flat cable and also on the flat cables the connectors that, that don't have the lock that they don't have the locking mechanism uh, are thin, uh, tending they are tending to damage the flat cable So in order to not damage the uh, motherboard, I'm going to use some um, quick alloy, quick alloy um, compound. Basically, uh, by doing so, I will be able to drop down the temperature, the melting temperature of the alloy, alloy the original alloy. And uh, by doing so, I'm not going to damage the um, the wires. Okay, so once the wires are out of the way, um, next step is by taking off the top cover, uh, disconnecting the last flat cables left. What I was doing earlier while I was just um, cleaning the motherboard. Okay, so next step it's by preparing to t take off the top cover, and we have some uh, hidden screws underneath the um, the this uh, this cover. This is quite a crucial point because um, uh, you are very close to the uh, top cover which is a metal 
and uh, it's very easy to to leave scratches so that's why I'm I'm doing uh, I'm, I'm very ca um, uh, cautious and I'm very slow as the rest of these uh, this camera peeling off the covers is not uh, is not that ideal but uh, it's nothing we can do Probably I'm not using the the right tweezers here. I might use I I I should have used something a bit more slightly bigger uh, in the way that I could catch better the um, the cover. But you you get the point. So we have two screws, uh, one on the left and one on the right. There are two on the right hand side, but uh, we need to take off only one, which is this, uh, this bottom, bottom side. And there are on another two screws, one on the right hand side and the, another one on the left hand side and we should be able to release the top cover Finally, the top cover is free. Just releasing this uh, this tape. There's a capacitor inside. Be very careful uh, when you are to extract the capacitor. And now we have the top cover. Next, I'm going to take apart the, the top cover, but before we do so, we need to discharge the capacitor, ensure there is no power left into the capacitor, otherwise we risk to uh, get a short to ourselves. I'm just checking to see if there's any power left. So now that we uh, discharge the capacitor, we can carry on with the uh, Disassembling, disassembly of the uh, of the top cover. By the way, if you want to skip this step, you can do it from the time timestamps of uh, of this uh, video. So next, I will uh, disconnect the. This is the flat cable that connects between the rest of the camera and the top cover for the buttons and all the dials and commands. Uh, there's a piece of um, a silicone uh, on this wire. This uh, wire uh, is the one that go connects with the um, a flash, the flash um, unit. So in order to disconnect it, we need to peel off all this uh, this silicone. The reason of the silicone uh, is. Um, since there's very high voltage uh, at this point, the manufacturer um, 
uh, cover the the connection points to ensure there's no way to um, to have a power leak to the the rest of the camera. For example, if if happens to use your camera on on a rainy day, uh, if water goes inside your camera, at least this. Uh, wires are sealed and they they are they cannot um, uh, then they cannot put any any kind of um, danger to the user. So as you have seen, I took the screws out and this uh, board. This is the mm, the switch power switch and common buttons board and all the dials that uh, stays on the top of the camera on the right hand side be very careful when you disconnect this um, flat cable it's not in a good position and we don't have a uh, the connector doesn't have a lock in order to unlock it. On this little board, we have uh, most of the components are buttons, selectors, uh, the power switching button, and pretty much that's it. So, what I'm doing here, I'm preparing to release the um, the capacitor wires again there is this um, and this silicone that needs to be peeled off in order to reach the, uh, the soldering point This is the negative wire from the capacitor. Next, we will take off the uh, electronic viewfinder. Um, Fuji films are one of the few, one of the first one, the first digital cameras that they put um, the electronic viewfinder. At least is one of the the best ones that they had. A great quality in their viewfinders. On this robot, the component that you see is the, um, the proximity sensor. In order to uh, do the next step, uh, we're going to need to take off this uh, metallic plate. Okay, so next, by disconnecting this plastic um, uh, 
cover holder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're gonna be able to release the capacitor. And also, this one is for uh, is the the button that uh, commands the once we push on it, we're gonna have the we're gonna be able to release the the flash on the camera. So this is the capacitor. Uh, we uh, by doing so, we managed to uh, pull it off. Okay, so next step, we're gonna release the um, the flash the whole flash um, unit the little board you uh, the little board that you see in left is the uh, power board of the uh, flash unit So very gently, the uh, best way to uh, release the flash is by opening up the flash completely. So in case you need to replace the, the whole uh, flash unit, flash group, this is the way to do it. Okay, next, I'm um, uh, not gonna take anything out. I'm just gonna explain a few things. So uh, here we have all the, um, this is the Wi-Fi button, the FN button, sorry. And we have the selectors, the power switch. And here we have the selector a compensation dial, dial so in order to open up this it's enough to take this screw out and this will come off be careful with this um, this um, contact brush it might get damaged very easy Next, we have the power switch, which is this one, and uh, shutting a button. Also, underneath this um, silicon, these are some silicon. Underneath them, there are four screws. You need to open up, uh, clean and uh, open up the screws, and this will come off. Also, you, you, you're going to be able to disassemble it. Next is the um, mode dial, and you again, it's enough to open up the screw, and this will come out from this side, and the dial will uh, will be able to pull it out from this other side. Here we have the um, a flash um, contacts. In order to, if you need to change the flash shoe you open up this uh, this um, this plate here it's, uh, you have to lift it up as I am doing not easy and then once it's lifted you push backwards push in that direction and you're gonna take this plate is like a cover and you're gonna reach four screws 
and you can change here you can change the flash shoe or other and also you can change the flash contact contact point but you're gonna need to uh, disorder these uh, connection points uh, you can it's better if you open up this and release it to have more space and then you will need need to uh, disconnect that um, contact points even the one in the middle this one so uh, plus the screws and yeah in you're gonna be able to replace it these are very rare occasions where you need to replace it if you want to replace the whole once you took all the dials out you you can replace also the plastic uh, um, the, the plastic thing over there and uh, pretty much that's it on the top cover well if you want to change these ones you have one screw left because we had to take the other screws out it's enough to unscrew this screw and uh, replace it same thing on the other side as well next we have the motherboard It's not necessarily need to take uh, this tape, but um, just to have more free uh, free space to work. Okay, so next we're gonna take off the screws. There are two screws on the motherboard. One uh, here. The screws are different, so keep in mind this other screw. Uh, the head is very flat. The one we took uh, before, basically, yeah, I was saying the one we took before had a bigger head, and this one had a um, a very flat head. Okay, so this is the motherboard. In case you need to replace the motherboard, now you know how to do it. Next, we are preparing to um, take off the image image sensor. You, if you want to, if you want to reuse this tape, you have to be very careful. Careful, and also you need to use a heat gun or a hair dryer in order to be able to take it off uh, easier. For me, it doesn't necessarily. I don't bother because I can. Um, I can put. I have new one to put in case I need. So uh, I just uh, just peel it off. I, I just want to show the entire process here just to, uh, to understand what kind of a speed you need to um, in order to peel off the, 
the tape and not damage it. And also this other tape, um, it's, um, I believe it's called is a couple tape. This helps to keep the image sensor uh, uh, cool down, cool down the image sensor, transmit a bit of a uh, uh, temperature, reduce the temperature. And as you can see, this tape uh, it gets really damaged when you try to 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 take it off, and also creates also lots of crease on it. But I I don't mind because I have. Uh, I have new one that I can I can add, but still I try to show how to what might be the right um, speed, the ten right tension that you need to put on it in order not to damage it. So our tape is away. Uh, next, uh, before I, I'm taking the sensor out, I'll, I'll take the battery the compa com compartment off. There are two screws inside, one here and one on the other hole. In case you need to replace the uh, battery compartment, this is uh, the way to do it. There's lots of process until re you're reaching this point, but it is what it is. This is the uh, battery. In case you need to put a uh, dummy battery, this is the cover for the battery, for the wires. I'm gonna put them aside. There's no need to leave them there. Okay, so now um, we are starting to taking the sensor out. Beware that unless, under, underneath these screws there are spacers and it's very probably that you're gonna lose, lose, lose them once you, you're trying to take the, the sensor out. And also I put, I'm signing up the position of the sensor. I put uh, one, two and three dots just to, um, to keep the order of the spacers. So I was say, what I was saying earlier is when you try to take the uh, sensor out, be very careful to take the sensor on uh, af, at, as flat as possible, not to twist it, because you may risk to um, lose the spacers and you might risk to, um, to mix them between each and every part. As you can see underneath the spacers are slightly moving and this is the sensor. This is the image sensor. In case you need to replace the sensor, this is the way to do it. But yeah, uh, luckily the spacers, uh, they didn't came off. So I am gonna sign them. I'm gonna put the same dot as I put on the sensor. So uh, uh, let's see how many, we have three here. So I'm gonna count, I'm gonna sign them, all three with the same, with the same uh, dot, the same sign, and this and this one. Be sure you put them in a safe place and uh, and you don't lose them. Once are signed, it's okay to mix them, but um, yeah, you must be very careful. And also, don't uh, try not to touch them because some of them they are very um, uh, fragile. So two dots, three dots on this other side. 
Apparently over here there are only two. I love the fact that uh, Fujifilm decided to keep the spacers and not put the springs because with the spacers for those that are, that are um, uh, trying to fix their camera there's no need once the sensor is replaced there's no need to uh, recalibrate the sensor and by placing the spacers in the same place you, you're gonna get the same distance needed to to have a sharp quality of 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 the images uh, the distance between the lens and the uh, the image sensor is the same will be the same so this is a very big uh, thumb up for thumbs up for uh, Fuji so this uh, this is uh, a plastic that but this plastic here holds the um, the capacitor, the flash capacitor, uh, two screws that keeps it in place. By the way, on all this, you have also the uh, the cover for the uh, for the connections, the side or with the connections for connections for the USB and HDMI uh, output. Okay, so next step is by taking off the shutter. We have three screws. This is the second that we are taking taking off. This is the third. Three screws here. Uh, the uh, the major issue with uh, this camera it might be with the shutter. The shutter tends to to fail not that often, but fails the the most common problem of the shutter, the reason why it fails is dust, uh, dust and sand. And by if we don't, we are not careful with our camera and adding sand or dust to the to the um, shutter, we reduce the lifespan drastically. Uh, what we are doing here, we are taking the selector. This is the manual mode and uh, autofocus mode for the lens. This is a simple switch. If this uh, doesn't work, definitely you have to replace it. You can reach here and check manually with the multimeter and see if it works. If, if it doesn't work, definitely you, not, you need to replace it. Okay, next step, we're gonna take off the uh, tripod screw, tripod mount screw. Uh, to this, we need to take off this screw, these two screws. This, uh, keep in mind the order, the, the way it has to go, it's not, uh, it has a, uh, a certain direction. Okay, next we're gonna take off the, um, the mount, the lens mount, the camera mount so-called for the lens. Uh, look at the way I'm taking this off, the way I'm keeping, I'm holding the screwdriver and that just because sometimes it's very, uh, it's very hard to unscrew the screws. Once we lose all the screws, we loosen all the screws, now it's easy to take them off. And also, if you have problems with the uh, releasing button of the, of the, of the mount, sometimes hap happened that I had to service that, so this is the way to do it. You have to take this, uh, the, the camera mount, off and replace the the other components for the, the releasing button this is just a spring okay so next 
we will take off the the lens connection very gently there's a there's a bit of a tape over there you can use again um, a heat gun or a hair dryer not for long couple of seconds just to warm up a bit the uh, double tape I'm going very slowly here otherwise I will damage the, 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 the tape so in case you need to replace this this is the way to do it this might happen quite often this uh, these contacts uh, these pins it tends to sometimes tends to get damaged and also by water if uh, your camera for whatever reason gets in contact with uh, water they might get damaged as well so you need to replace it okay so here we have the switch if we need to uh, take that off it's enough to release the, the screw again here if we need to replace the uh, the connection the release of the of the lens button uh, is just by taking off the screws from the back if you want to replace the header the leather well that's not of an easy step I do recommend not to take the leather off unless you need to replace it the tiny circuit board that you you see on the right hand side that's the Wi-Fi board and if you have problems with the Wi-Fi usually the Wi-Fi when you try to turn it on on the menu it, 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 it doesn't do anything or either stays gray and that shows that may tell that the uh, Wi-Fi board is uh, is damaged so you need to in that in that way you're gonna need to replace it and this is this is it we took off almost everything and um, I do hope you you enjoyed what you see uh, so far and also I do hope you learned something if you have anything to to add please use the comment sections section below and if you like this uh, this uh, video put, put a thumbs up and also consider to subscribe to to see new new videos like this and uh, some other new contents that I'm working on and by then see you next time